Hi, this is Brad from Power Tools. In this video, we're going to go through the process of adding tags and collections as filters into the filter menu. So let's log into the filter menu and then go to the filter menu app. Now, the first thing we want to do is to create a new group. So in this case, I'm going to add some tag filters. Uh, I'm going to, this is a snowboard shop. And I'm going to use the board shape as a filter type. And then I'm going to add, press add tags. And I'm going to type in the names of all the tags that I want to add into this group in the order that I want them in. So in this case, I want Canva and Rocker. Now, these filters are going to need collections backing them. So you probably want to always make sure that this option here is checked. Uh, you can also use the tag names exactly as they appear here. So instead of uh, the, the tag name, this is actually more like the title name. And then if you wanted, we could add a prefix to it. So for example, shape. So the tags would end up actually looking like like that. In this case, we don't want that feature, so we'll go and check that. And then it also, if we need to create these collections, it gives us an option. We can either use tags, so as in product tag equals Canva or product tag equals Rocker. We can use the title contains the name, so the title contains the words Canva or Rocker. Or we can say the type contains the name. So for example, the product type may be uh, Canva boards, in which case uh, it would match for, for those ones. In this case, it's pretty straightforward. We just want to use tags, so we'll press add filters. Okay, so it's just creating those collections now. If we reload the page, we can see these are now our filters. We can go data source and have a look. And we can see that there's a couple of boards in there, which is great. We can also see the rule and you could adjust that if you wanted. Okay, so now let's also add another new group and we'll show you adding a collection. So we could perhaps use type. Now, typically you would use the automated setup in the vendor type filters for this, but just as an example, I'll show you how this works. So we can then go to add collections and we can find all the collections that we want to add to our type group. In this case, it doesn't really matter. We can pick anything, pick just a bunch of, these aren't particularly types, but there we go. And we press add filters. Now, this is where things get interesting. You have two options here. We can either sync the tag or we can convert the collection. Now, the difference is that with sync tag, what it will do is for every product within this collection, it's going to add the tag of Neff. So typically, this is how you'd want to do it because we know that this collection already has the rule uh, product vendor equals Neff, which is correct. Likewise for Nike, it's product vendor equals Nike. So let's press sync tag for that one. So we'll just minimize this. But let's see what happens if we press convert. Now, if we press convert, what that means is from this point on, all the products will need to manually be tagged with Nike. They're not, or Nike they're not going to be automatically tagged. So if we press that, it'll just take a, a little bit to convert it. It's already done it. That process can take quite a while. But what you'll notice now is the data source for Neff is product vendor equals Neff, and it's automatically filled in all the products. Whereas now for Nike or Nike, you can see that it's product tag 
is equal to Nike. The difference being that now you would have to manually tag all the products. Once you're done, press save and update and we can view those filters on the store. So we'll go to our catalogue and you can see we've added our filters here.